Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungso, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we are all temples of the Holy Spirit. We are given the gift of the Holy Spirit at baptism and confirmation. Let us allow the Spirit of God to rule our lives. Let us allow the Holy Spirit to enlighten us, to guide us, and to give us wisdom. Let us now prepare ourselves for this Eucharist by humbly acknowledging our sins and by entrusting ourselves to God's merciful love. Lord Jesus, you give us new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the glorification of your Christ and the light of the Holy Spirit have unlocked for us the gates of eternity, grant, we pray, that partaking of so great a gift, our devotion may grow deeper and our faith be strengthened through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived in Caesarea on a visit to Festus. Since they spent several days there, Festus referred Paul's case to the king, saying, There is a man here left in custody by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews brought charges against him and demanded his condemnation. I answered them that it was not Roman practice to hand over an accused person before he has faced his accusers and had the opportunity to defend himself against their charge. So when they came together here, I made no delay. The next day, I took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought in. His accusers stood around him, but did not charge him with any of the crimes I suspected. Instead, they had some issues with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, but who Paul claimed was alive. Since I was at a loss how to investigate this controversy, I asked if he were willing to go to Jerusalem and there stand trial on these charges. And when Paul appealed that he be held in custody for the emperor's decision, I ordered him held until I could send him to Caesar. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you angels, you mighty in strength, who do his bidding. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Holy Spirit will teach you everything and remind you of all I told you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. 
He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you. When you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this, signifying what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, our readings today once again present to us how the Holy Spirit works in our life. And it is fitting that as we prepare for the solemnity of Pentecost this coming Sunday, we reflect on the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Who is the Holy Spirit? And what does the Holy Spirit do to us? From our readings today, we could see that the Holy Spirit develops and transforms our God-given gifts so that we may use them for the good of other people and for the glory of God. Yan ang ginagawa ng Espiritu Santo. Lahat tayo may biyayang ipinagkaloob mula sa Panginoon. May kanya-kanya tayong handog mula sa Diyos. Kanya-kanyang kakayanan at talento. Ang Espiritu Santo ang siyang nagpapalakas ng mga biyayang ito mula sa Diyos upang ito'y magamit natin, hindi lamang para sa ating sariling kapakinabangan, kundi para sa ating kapwa at para sa ikaluluwalhati ng Diyos. In our first reading today, Paul was imprisoned in Caesarea. But if we analyze closely the story especially of yesterday and today, our first reading yesterday and today would show us that while Paul was being tried and imprisoned, Paul seems not to be a victim at all because he was in control of things. He was able to manipulate the situation for his own advantage. Yesterday, Paul was presented before the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He was the one to be tried by these two religious groups. And yet, Paul was able to use the conflict between the Pharisees and the Sadducees for his own advantage. Sa halip na siya ang kalabani ng dalawang grupong ito, yung dalawang grupo pang ito ang naglaban-laban sa kanilang sarili. And in our first reading today, Paul appealed to the emperor, to Caesar. And because of this, he will be given a trip to Rome 
at the expense of the government. And Paul wanted really to go to Rome. So he was able to accomplish what he wanted by trying to manipulate the situation for his own advantage. Paul was a very gifted person. And yet through the Holy Spirit, the gifts of St. Paul was used for mission, for evangelization, and for witnessing to Christ. In our gospel today, we heard how Peter assured Jesus of his love for him. Three times Peter declared, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And three times also Jesus gave him the task of taking care of the flock. We all know the personality of Peter. Yes, Peter had leadership qualities. He was the leader of the apostles. And but, but we also know the flaws of Peter. He was not a perfect person. He had many weaknesses. He even denied Jesus. And yet, through the Holy Spirit, the gift of St. Peter, his being a leader, because of his love for Jesus, was transformed by God into shepherding the flock. My dear brothers and sisters, Peter and Paul show us how the Holy Spirit works in our life. The Holy Spirit strengthens our gifts. The Holy Spirit develops our talents. The Holy Spirit transforms our gifts into gifts for mission, into missionary talents, gifts, blessings that could be used for the good of others. Paul was a very passionate man. That was his gift. And the Holy Spirit redirected that gift for mission. Peter was a leader. And the Holy Spirit channeled that gift into being a shepherd of the church. The Holy Spirit shapes, molds, and transforms our talents so that we may use them for the good of others and for the glory of God. My dear brothers and sisters, what are your gifts? What are your talents? What are the things that you consider as blessings in your life? And where do you use these gifts, these talents, and these blessings? Lahat tayo binigyan ng biyaya ng Panginoon, kanya-kanyang regalo. Saan natin ginagamit ang ating regalo? Do we allow the Holy Spirit to redirect our gifts so that we may use them for the good of others? Or we just use our gifts for selfish gains. Matalino ka, saan mo ginagamit ang iyong talino? Marami kang abilidad, saan mo ginagamit ang iyong abilidad? Marunong kang makipag-ugnayan sa tao, saan mo ginagamit ang talentong yan? Marami kang material wealth, Marami kang properties, marami kang pera. Saan mo ginagamit ang mga biyayang iyan? Do we use them for the good of others? Or do we use them only for ourselves? My dear brothers and sisters, 
Today, let us thank God for every blessing that He has given us. Hindi nagsasawa ang Diyos sa pagbibigay sa atin ng mga biyaya araw-araw. Kaya dapat tayong magpasalamat. And let us ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen, to improve, to transform our natural gifts and talents so that we may use them always for the good of our brothers and sisters and for the glory of God. For in the end, that is the purpose of God's gifts for other people and for the greater glory of God. Mindful that we are sent on the same mission as Peter's, we ask God the Father to strengthen our faith. And for every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Father and those who exercise authority in the Church may be guided by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that married couples may be sensitive to each other's needs and find true happiness in their lives together. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That sinners may find hope and encouragement in the Lord's forgiveness of Peter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the sick and those who are in distress may experience the Lord's presence amidst their sufferings and difficulties. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That our beloved dead may receive light, happiness, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray in silence for our personal petitions. Let us remember the people who need our prayers and the intentions offered in this Mass. Heavenly Father, you sent your Son to save the world through the work of your Church. May we be inspired by the example of Peter to labor for the spread of your kingdom on earth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Look mercifully, O Lord, we pray upon the sacrificial gifts of your people, and that they may become acceptable to you. Let the coming of the Holy Spirit cleanse our consciences through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after His resurrection, He plainly appeared to all His disciples. And was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior, Savior of the world, world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us now pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whose mysteries we are cleansed and nourished, grant, we pray, that this banquet with which you give us may bring everlasting life through Christ our Lord. Amen. We shall now pray the prayers for the eighth day of our novena to the Holy Spirit. And today we ask God to give us the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. And kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. And you shall renew the face of the earth. The fruits of the Spirit are perfections that the Holy Spirit forms in us as a pledge of eternal glory. The tradition of the Church lists twelve of them, charity, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, generosity, gentleness, faithfulness, modesty, self-control, and chastity. These fruits mark the lives of those who live by the Spirit as St. Paul tells, uh, tells the Galatians when he writes, Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's lead. The fruits of the Holy Spirit produce spiritual delight 
and fill with joy the hearts of those who belong to Christ. May the Holy Spirit fill us with the joy of living the gospel so that many others may be drawn to Christ and His Church as the fruit of a new Pentecost in our time. Let us pray. Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, eternal, eternal love, love of the Father and the Son, kindly bestow on us the fruit of charity, that we may be united to you by divine love, the fruit of joy, that we may be filled with holy consolation, the fruit of peace, that we may enjoy tranquility of soul, and the fruit of goodness, that we may live the gospel without wavering. Divine Spirit, be pleased to infuse in us the fruit of generosity, that we may willingly meet our neighbor's needs, the fruit of kindness, that we may be benevolent toward other or all, the fruit of patience, that we may not be discouraged by delay, but may persevere in prayer and charity, and the fruit of gentleness, that we may subdue every rising of ill temper, stifle every murmur, and overcome the sinful tendencies of our nature in our dealings with our neighbor. Creator Spirit, graciously impart to us the fruit of faithfulness that we may rely with assured confidence on the Word of God, the fruit of modesty, that we may order our demeanor properly, and the fruits of self-control and chastity, that we may keep our bodies in such holiness as befits your temple, so that, having by your assistance preserved our hearts pure on earth, we may merit in Jesus Christ, according to the words of the Gospel, to see God eternally in the glory of His kingdom. Amen. Mary, model of life in the Spirit, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your Spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, ipanalangin mo kami sa mga.